This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, last lecture on the performance measurement section of the syllabus. And we've already done financial performance, non-financial performance, divisional performance, and well, what's related to it, transfer pricing. Uh, but this one, which is a short lecture, is performance in the not-for-profit sector. And what we're talking about, as in terms of not-for-profit, are things like charities, which obviously aren't there to make a profit, uh, and uh, state organisations, things like the health service, the um, police force, um, which again aren't profit-making organisations. Now, um, Think about something like a hospital. Uh, the state is putting lots of money into hospitals. And so they want to try and find ways of making sure we can measure performance, you know, that the hospital's doing a good job. Uh, and there's been a lot of work done on it recently in many countries, certainly in the UK, <clears throat> of trying to think of ways of actually measuring the performance rather than just putting money in and let the hospital, you know, do whatever it likes. Uh, and there are really two sections to this lecture. Uh, you'll see on the first page of the uh, lecture notes, problems with performance measurement. And uh, quickly run down there, you know, one is multiple objectives. Uh, for instance, uh, if we talk about a hospital, it's all right saying, oh, our, their job is to make people better, but it depends. You know, uh, some things you can cure and make better, fine, that's their objective, a broken arm. Uh, we can mend it uh, one way or another, it's an objective. But then, of course, you've got other illnesses which can't be cured. Uh, and the objective of the hospital is a bit different. It's not to cure it, it's to uh, help them live longer or to at least keep them free of pain. So you've got all these different objectives. Uh, which isn't quite the same as for a, a company. Uh, the difficulty of measuring outputs. Um, okay, hospital, an objective is to make people better, but how are you going to measure whether they've been successful or not? Financial constraints. Clearly, there's a limit to how much money that uh, the state puts into a hospital and therefore how much that hospital can spend. I know that companies also have limits as to how much they can spend, but they do have access to extra money. You know, they can always borrow more, which isn't the case for a hospital. They just have to accept what they're given by the state. Uh, political, social, legal considerations. Um, I'm sure you, you're well aware, wherever you happen to live, that there are arguments, very much political and social here, but there are some arguments that the state should provide free health care to everybody. On the other hand, you get people arguing that people should pay for their own health care uh, through insurance and, and things. Now, I'm not entering into the political side of that, but there are these arguments. To what extent should people be required to pay? To what extent um, should the state pay? Well, you've got all that sort of consideration, which, again, doesn't apply to a limited company. And finally, little market competition and no profit motive. Uh, hospitals, OK, there is an element, again, in some countries of competition, that you do have private hospitals. Uh, but on the other hand, things like the police force, the fire service, obviously there is no competition. You don't have private police and private uh, firemen. Uh, and, of course, no profit motive. <clears throat> limited company, the ultimate objective is to make more profit. That clearly isn't the case for something like a hospital, a state hospital. So that's one bit, be able to talk about the problems, because if you do get a question on this, um, certainly in section C, there stands to be a fair amount of writing, and it could be simply talking about the problems. Over the page, though, uh, from a some point of view, perhaps slightly more important, We've said we want to find ways of measuring how well our hospital is doing. 
because we want to make sure we get value for money or the state gets value for money. The state's putting a lot of money into hospitals. They want to make sure the money's being used well, uh, which is why we need performance measures. And as you can see, standardly, we assess the performance, or we try and assess performance under the three E's, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. And so it's these three I need to go through and explain and give suggestions. There's no rules here, but suggestions are how we might measure. And particularly the last two, I'm well aware that even for people who, for whom um, English is the first language, people get confused over efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, and it's worse still, obviously, if uh, English isn't your first language. So I'll try and make sure we're clear about the distinction. Uh, first of all, though, what do we mean by economy? I've written there, and it's I've made it a bit posher than sound a bit posher than it is. Attaining the appropriate quantity and quality of inputs to the lowest cost. What we really mean by that, and this isn't really a question of measuring performance, uh, but surely the state wants to make sure that they're paying a fair price. Uh, for the resources. So they're paying a fair price, not necessarily by the cheapest, but we're not being overcharged. And the only two uh, ways really you could be expected to suggest in the exam, you see the resources, think of a hospital, but it's the same, whether we're talking about fire, firemen, policemen, whatever, the main resources for a hospital are all the costs associated with the building, Uh, including equipment. You know, obviously these are huge costs. The cost of running the building, the cost of the medical equipment, the cost of the beds. And the other one, for any state organisation, another major resource, major cost, is the staff costs, uh, the wages. Well, how can we try and make sure we pay a fair price? You know, a hospital, we need a thousand new beds. How do we make sure that we're paying a fair price and not being overcharged? Well, uh, the standard way, surely, is that uh, rather than just go to one supplier where there's a risk of corruption and no competition and so on, what we call put out to tender. If we need 100 new beds, then advertise this hospital wants 100 new beds. This is what the beds must be like. And invite companies to give us a quote. Um, you know, and if 10 different companies offer to supply the beds, then we can examine the quotes and choose the best. Not necessarily the cheapest. Um, you know, we want to make sure that they're the right quality we need but at least by having competitive tender, different companies quoting. That should eliminate, or certainly reduce, the risk of us being overcharged. If there's only one supplier, they'll feel they can charge anything. Uh, what about staff? How do we make sure we're paying them a fair wage? You know, but obviously, um, the staff want to have as higher wage as possible. We want to pay them as little as possible. How do we try and make sure we're paying them a fair wage, or year by year, that we're giving them a fair wage increase? Well, the standard way, certainly the way they try to agree in uh, the UK, but a nice idea about how to deal with this uh, is to tie the wage increases to those of jobs in the private sector uh, that require 
similar skills. Now, what I'm getting at there are hospitals. There are, certainly in the UK, private hospitals. And they compete with each other. So the wages they pay to their staff, they're driven by competitive forces. You know, they, if one hospital pays more, another pays more, and so on. And so we have a direct comparison that if a nurse in a private hospital is, being, uh, is getting an increase of 10% this year, fine. Maybe that's a fair wage, and therefore our staff in the state hospital should get an increase of 10%. Now, of course, that can work for nursing because you've got private hospitals. But what about the police? Uh, the police, obviously, there's no private police force. So you try and find a private sector job which needs similar skills. Now, I know there are different levels of policemen, obviously. But perhaps for certain policemen, um, they need the same skills or qualifications or whatever um, as perhaps security men. Now, of course, there are private security firms and their wages are largely dictated by market forces. So, if security firms are um, increasing wages by 5%, maybe the police force for that particular level of policemen, maybe they should be increasing by 5% as well. So, it's only suggestions, but um, there, there, are the two main ways that might be worth suggesting of achieving economy, that we're paying a fair price for the resources. Uh, the other two, though, are, are much more important. And as I said before, so many people get confused over which is which. Now, I don't want, want to create more confusion, but I am going to start with the second one first, effectiveness. So if you're falling asleep, perhaps it might be as well to stop the lecture and start it again when you're awake. But effectiveness, effectiveness, we want to look at how successful we are at achieving our objectives. Now, again, I'll use a hospital as an example. What's the objective of a hospital? I mean, I said earlier, there are lots of them, but the objective of a hospital is ultimately to try and make people better. But a bit like uh, the lecture we had on um, uh, non-financial performance measures for businesses, it's all right saying, oh, we're doing a good job, lots of people are getting better, and so on. But we actually need something we can act, actually measure, that we have a number, that we can compare year by year or with other hospitals, is this hospital actually doing, achieving what it's there for, or isn't it? So an obvious thing you might measure, and it is measured in um, the UK for each hospital, is the death rate. As a percent, the percentage of patients who died. Now, it may seem a bit extreme, um, and obviously um, it's carefully categorised. You know, some hospitals, if the hospital is only dealing in broken arms, then you wouldn't expect many, if any, deaths. If another hospital is specialising in some serious illness, then obviously uh, you'd expect them to have more deaths. And so it is categorised depending on the type of hospital or fits within a hospital, so that it is a fair comparison. But they do measure what percent of patients die, so that we can compare, we can measure from year to year. This is improving or isn't it? Uh, we can measure by comparing the different hospitals. Is this hospital doing particularly well, or is this hospital doing badly? You know, there might be a problem. <coughs> It's only a suggestion. Uh, what else? What about this one? Sounds a bit complicated. But the percent of patients returning. Yeah. 
Now, I'm going to say a bit more because I don't mean to suggest uh, that, like on our financial measures, they're returning because they enjoyed it so much and so they come again. No, the percent of patients returning with the same problem within a limited period. No, I don't know, it may be hard to actually measure it. These are only suggestions. Uh, but you see, I'm talking about if they come back with the same problem, suggesting that they weren't cured the first time, that perhaps the hospital said it's all finished and threw them out. But in fact, the problem was still there, therefore they have to come back again. I've said within a limited period, because, you know, obviously lots of problems might reoccur years later. I'm talking about trying to find what percent of people were let out of hospital when they shouldn't have been because the work hadn't been finished. Now, I'm not going to go on. They're only suggestions. But these are measures you can put in place where you can actually end up with a number, you know, 1% death rate, 2% death rate, and so on. Uh, and it's important to have a number, then we can actually say, yes, we've improved, or no, we've got worse. And certainly hospitals in the UK, there's a whole series of measures like this, which are published every, every three months. A whole series of them, uh, looking at this sort of thing. Are they achieving their objective? Uh, you know, same for any organisation, police, you know, what's the job of police? One job of the police is to try and solve crimes. So perhaps a performance measure uh, might be what percent of crimes have been solved. The fire service, all right, put out fires, what percent were put out? Uh, but another thing of the uh, fire service, you want them to arrive quickly. So you might measure um, how many minutes on average does it take for them to actually arrive at a fire once they've been told. You know, on average last year it took 15 minutes for the fire engine to arrive. This year it's only taking 10 minutes. Fine, there's been an improvement. Uh, in exam, it might just be writing generally, suggest, explain what we mean by effectiveness, and suggest a few measures. Or, a bit like the um, questions on non-financial performance, they might give you uh, a table of information, such as number of patients during the year, number of deaths during the year, and so on, uh, and ask you to come up with a few measures. Well, you're looking for the sort of thing that I, uh, I've been saying, but it depends what information is given in this table. It's good to you to decide from those figures what percents, what measures may be worth calculating. All right, well, I hope I made um, effectiveness clear. Are they, basically, are they making people better? Or are they doing what we want from them, what their objective is? The other one, though, efficiency. is really another word for resource utilisation, which is what... Uh, we talked about when we looked at non-financial measures for companies, forgetting for the moment how well we're doing at making people better, we want to make sure the resources are used properly. You know, our main resources, again, are um, all the costs associated with the buildings and the costs of staff. I'm not saying there aren't others, but you know, they're for any state organization, the big ones. And the buildings, you know, obviously there's been a lot of money being spent running the building. If it turned out that our hospital was only ever, the beds were only ever 40% full. So we've got all these empty beds, then why on earth are we spending all that money? With all these empty beds, it's wasting money. From a pure efficiency, resource utilisation point of view, 
to make the best use of the money spent on buildings, we'd want the beds to be as full as possible. And um, a standard way of thinking about measure is effectively the occupancy rate. Uh, the percent of beds occupied, obviously on average. Now, that's a difficult one for a hospital, obviously. Uh, sometimes there will be a lot of empty beds, people aren't ill, but perhaps in winter, a lot more people are ill and it's more full. But at the same time, it's not that we want to encourage people to be ill, but if you did have two hospitals in the same town, and both of them were only ever, on average, 40% full, why on earth are we spending the money on two hospitals? You know, maybe we should close one and have everybody in the other one. Instead of, you know, that's 80% full instead of two hospitals that are both only 40% full. So again, it's something you would want to measure. Uh, not because we want more people to be ill, but as I say, if, this, if that percentage is uh, always low, then surely we're wasting money. Uh, what about staff? Again, there are uh, obviously different levels of staff, but the nurses, for instance. You know, that would be wonderful if we had one nurse for every patient, but that's ridiculous. The state can't afford that level of care. We want enough nurses to keep the hospital running, but if we find that, you know, half the nurses are sat around drinking tea all day because they've not got a full job, then that's not very efficient. We're wasting the resource. And so the sort of uh, thing you might measure, uh, ooh, number of patients per nurse. Surely, from the point of view of uh, saving money, of not wasting money, I'd rather one nurse could deal with a thousand patients than one nurse could only deal with one patient. I know that's extreme, obviously, but the more patients one nurse can um, look after, the more we're saving money, the more we're not wasting money, the more efficient we are. Now, there can obviously be a conflict with effectiveness. You know, one nurse or one doctor per patient might give perfect care and therefore uh, be much more effective at making people better. But the state can't afford one doctor, one nurse for every patient. And so we've got to uh, strike a level. It's a combination of the two. On the one hand, try and make people uh, better as much as we can, but at the same time, recognising that there are limits on how much money that can be provided. Uh, and therefore, you know, we do want staff to deal with as many patients as possible. Uh, and that's everything. So I hope I've made it clear. I mean, those measures I've written down are only suggestions, obviously. Um, if it's pure writing, you only be expected to make one or two suggestions. The main thing is that your suggestions make it clear that you understand what we mean by economy, efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, again, as I said, if we do have numbers there, there'll be a, a table of information. If it's hospital, perhaps number of patients, perhaps number of deaths and so on. Uh, and it's using the information available to think of measures that you could calculate uh, but again making it clear that you you knew the difference between effectiveness and efficiency <laughs>